I approached Leeds Industrial Museum. I, I, I came here and um, asked if I could not not so much create a piece of work. I, want, I wanted to just see if I could create a piece of work. They were very open to the idea, to me coming in and spending time on my own and just sort of just wandering around the spaces. I'd been working here for some time, several months, before I became aware of the New Expressions Funding Award. The project had gone on to a degree where they realised they were going to need some funding to be able to pay for it. Um, so yeah, they applied for and were successful in a um, New Opportunities Award. Memory is based on, on memory, that's, that's, that's the sort of the, the first thing. And it's based on memories of former mill workers. I wasn't so concerned with recollections of what the workers did as to what they thought about whilst they were here. So the project has roots in emotion. It very much comes from what people felt as they were working, for example. So when I met with the guys, it was, it was pretty much like this sort of situation now. So I would just sit and chat to them and record the conversations. But from that basis, I returned to the museum and listened back to the conversations through headphones in various spaces that I, I wanted to create work and began a process of really just being in, in a space and listening back. I would hone in on perhaps just one particular thing that someone might say to me and then I would store that in my mind and then just, just see if the, the place I was in, just see what resonated with that particular memory and each piece of work started out life in clay onto which I would make impressions from objects, say, say it was wool. I then cast that impression into plaster and then when the plaster had dried I skimmed porcelain slip over the surface. The biggest challenge that I find working with artists is that they get very, very involved, understandably, in the creative process and can sometimes slightly lose sight of the fact that what they're exhibiting is going to be open to the public and who those visiting public will be and how they'll be able to access what it is that's being shown. So we kind of work on parallel lines with that and I'm kind of working as a reminder of what the end goal is, but the artists bring their kind of creativity and their vision to the site and, and making us look at things in a different way, which is great. I, I wanted to try to fill some of the spaces with something. I didn't really know what at the time, but I, wa I wanted to put something in the spaces that I felt would resonate with those spaces. That was really all I concerned myself with. It was only sort of part way through as I was applying for funding. That's, that was when I started to tie a number of strands together that included the idea of seeking out former mill workers and finding out about their, their past. David was not corralled or directed in any way. He was given free reign. It was, what do you want to do? Um, we didn't put outcomes down for him, we didn't say what we expected it to be or how we expected it to be. He was to come to us with what he wanted to do and we would facilitate that as much as possible. So I think as the, as the heritage organisation your job is facilitation, is to make whatever as much possible as you can make possible. I've worked in industry for, for many years so I was happy and un I understand how to report back and I was happy, very, very happy. And Indeed, I wanted and needed that strata to be in place because I knew that it was a, it was a growing project. It was getting bigger, and so we needed to have the sort of the, those formal meetings, especially when marketing the marketing guys got involved as well. It's been a very well managed and well executed project, but it certainly needed it certainly needed that that, that the formalised structures. Yeah, definitely. It is a challenge, it's a challenging exhibition, it's not what people expect, it's not interpreted. Um, so from an access point of view that can be quite tricky and it's been really interesting to see people responding. And we didn't want to kind of simplify or dumb down or patronise the audience by sort of telling them too much or telling people how to react. And obviously there's been some people who said I, I don't get it, I don't like it, I think it's a waste of money, that's totally valid. I'd like to be able to have conversations with those people. I think it's a shame that, that we don't have more of an opportunity set up to be able to respond and have a bit of a chat. Um, but generally it's been, it's been really, really positive. It does matter what people think, but it's not something that, that I sort of worry about. And some people have been really dismissive that I've spoken to and didn't really have any time at all 
to talk to me or to look, or to look at the, the sculptures and other people I've spent a lot, a lot of time with talking about the work and they've wanted to know a lot about what lies behind the sculptures but I would say the reaction has, has been really good. We knew that we were both really invested in the project and we knew we wanted the same, we had the same goals and the same outcomes. You know, we wanted it to work and we both believed in it. And that enabled us to have a very open and honest working relationship where we'd challenge each other. You know, he'd want to do things a certain way and I'd feel like they couldn't be done that way or I'd have to put the brakes onto a certain aspect of it or whatever. So we would butt up a lot and I think that's really important for working with an artist and for your personal development and for theirs is to really find where those edges are and really push each other's boundaries. We've been Leeds Industrial Museum for about 32 years now but obviously before that it was a working mill but it's never been used or explored in terms of the working mill aspect. So David was the first person to come in and try and open up that side of things. So when he said he wanted to find people who'd worked here before, that had never been done. And now as a result of that, one of the legacies that we have as a museum is that we now have contacts with about six or eight or ten people who have this whole amazing treasure trove of memories and anecdotes and stories about what working life was like here. We're having a new room um, put together called the Tempest Room, which is going to house the archive that we've now acquired and open it up to the public and start to tell some of those stories that we now have. So it's had a lasting impact here and it will have a lasting impact on visitors to come because we now have more information that we can share with them. The support that they've, they've, they've provided has been, has been really, 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 really great. I've had regular phone calls with Grace and Claire and they've, they've just been no, nothing but just completely behind the, the project and really, really supportive. So I've, re, I've enjoyed every second of it really, really have. It's been great. I think it's been really beneficial for us because, um, like I say, we don't have a lot of experience of contemporary art exhibitions on this scale. So I think being part of a big family group, a big organisation, having the context there with people who have more experience, who are able to advise and who have other connections has been really, really useful to us.